Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of a 36 pulse control rectifier in MATLAB. So let's get started. This is a simulated circuit diagram of a 36 pulse control rectifier. So the circuit looks uh, complicated, but trust me, it's very, very simple. Uh, in case uh, you've not watched a 24 pulse control rectifier or 18 pulse control rectifier, that doesn't matter. I'm going to start this from scratch and help you out uh, in order to simulate 36 pulse control rectifier in MATLAB. So let's get started. Before that, a few of the important things to remember is 36 pulse control rectifier can be constructed using 6 6 pulse control rectifier in this particular fashion. It can also be constructed by using 3 12 pulse control rectifier. It can also be constructed by using 2 18 pulse control rectifier. But we are following the first technique that is by constructing using 6 pulse control rectifier, 6 different 6 pulse control rectifier. So all right, uh, so uh, once the overview of 36 pulse control rectifier is understood we will get started with the simulation let's go to matlab all right here we are so uh, we will be clicking on the simulink library browser a first component that is required is the powerview block so search for powerview uh, we will be getting it right over here at this block we will be requiring a voltage measurement block as well so add this block as well uh, once this is done uh, we would be requiring a three phase uh, source uh, so search for three phase source in this particular fashion uh, you will be getting it over here so add this block once this is done uh, we would be requiring a vi measurement block uh, so we will be searching for vi measurement and add this block as well um, after that we will be uh, requiring a transformer so the transformer that is used in this case is a zigzag transformer in order to provide the necessary uh, phase shift with respect to the circuit so i will be uh, using this phase, zigzag phase shifting transformer once this is added uh, we will be uh, requiring a pulse generator block so search for pulse you will be uh, getting it right at the bottom scroll a little down uh, so there are two options with respect to pulse generator that is one for six six pulse and one for the 12 pulse one so we will be choosing six pulse in this case so uh, this is the one that we are supposed to choose so once this is done uh, we will be requiring a thyristor which is obviously the heart of the circuit we will be using a universal bridge for that matter so scroll it down add this block as well once all of these blocks are added uh, we will be uh, requiring a series rlc branch so the these can be later converted into resistor inductor and capacitor respectively based on our requirements we need to measure both uh, mean and rms value but we will focus on only rms value in order to determine rms value search by mean uh, that is how we can easily find rms value that's the reason so um, we are not supposed to choose this rms and mean value this is used for dsp systems uh, scroll a little down we will be using this rms value so add that block as well once all of these are added we will be requiring a display block so search for display uh, you will be uh, getting a uh, display uh, block right at the top over here and uh, we also require a scope in order to see the how, uh, output waveform as how it looks like so add this block as well apart from that we need a constant block uh, which can be used as uh, the angle that we are triggering uh, with respect to the firing angle is concerned so uh, add this block as well once all of these are added uh, we can get started with our circuit connections we'll be placing them in appropriate positions at the first place and then uh, we can get started with respect to our circuit uh, connections according to the circuit diagram that is shown so the three phase uh, source uh, for convenience we will be having it uh, at the left hand side extreme left power give block is generally placed at the top and uh, we will be uh, requiring a voltmeter at the load end as well so uh, first up we need to set up few parameters uh, so click on this exact transformer and go to parameters we will be changing so from 10 into uh, uh, e power 6 we will be changing into uh, 50 into uh, e power 3 so uh, make this changes so uh, we will be changing the supply frequency as well uh, as to be equal to 50 hertz so uh, make a copy of this or uh, you can uh, click on ok without that as well anyways we'll directly copy the zigzag transformer so uh, we will be requiring six copies of this uh, so we will be uh, once the parameters are entered we will be copy pasting them uh, six times so we will be uh, copy pasting them by using control c control v i'll be placing one underneath the other so that uh, we will be able to uh, construct the circuit according to the schematics so uh, it looks in this particular fashion uh, i will try to enlarge it as far as possible 
nevertheless uh, once you understand the logic of constructing it with respect to the first portion of the circuit you will eventually be able to do it on your own for the rest of them so i will be requiring universal bridge as well so i am uh, placing them right underneath uh, them so that i will be able to uh, connect uh, the respective phase terminals of those universal bridges that's the only reason uh, for doing so uh, once we have connected all of these in this particular fashion uh, we will be placing the supply here and we will be having a three phase uh, vi measurement block at this point so connect the uh, three phase supply to the vi measurement block uh, so double click on the vi measurement block and uh, choose the current measurement to be equal to no because we are not measuring any current parameters over here um, we have missed out a parameter so uh, one of the important blocks so search for pl uh, wait for a little bit and scroll right at the bottom you will be having something called as PLL uh, three phase so add this block as well so once this is done uh, we will be taking the output from VAB phase to this particular terminal and we'll be giving it to omega t over here the purpose of having this is very simple this uh, PLL synchronization block synchronizes with respect to our supply frequency and uh, it in turn gives to the pulse generator block and the constant terminal over here should be connected at this particular point so once this is done uh, we will be setting up the input parameters with respect to the three phase source so the phase voltage that is used in our case is 254.05 volt which is basically 440 divided by root 3 the supply frequency that is chosen according to our standards is 50 Hertz so you can choose it for 60 as well depending upon the region in which you are located and uh, once this is done I will be shorting the terminals with respect to uh, uh, a B and C minus of a B and C so zoom in a little bit so that we can see it properly um, and short these respective terminals for all the zigzag transformers in this particular fashion I have uh, shorted all these terminals with respect to all the zigzag transformers now we can get started off with uh, connecting these uh, to the respective ABC terminals with respect to the supply uh, similarly we'll have to do it for the other zigzag transformers as well carefully observe I have taken a plus to the supply b plus to the supply and c plus to the supply now a plus all the eight a plus terminals should be shorted so with respect to the supply uh, so now i have connected a plus to this a plus b plus to this b plus eventually it will be connected at this point that is the reason i am doing in this particular fashion so that uh, it might look complex by the way it looks like but uh, eventually we will uh, not focus on that we will be focusing on how to uh, develop a schematic later on we can uh, change it based on our requirement with respect to the circuit connection and how it looks like so uh, again this a plus uh, will be connected to this and b plus will be connected to this uh, eventually which is in turn connected to the supply uh, that's the reason why we do this so uh, and this C plus can be connected here as well because it looks complicated over here and once uh, this is done we can connect this A plus to this point as it looks free over here and connect it to this point and this C plus to this point again we can follow the same thing with respect to this connect A plus to this point and connect V plus to this point and connect C plus to uh, this particular point so once this is done uh, we have connected uh, with respect to the supply side so we will be requiring uh, the firing angle to be decided isn't it so uh, at the first place choose the pulse width so 360 uh, we have six different blocks 360 divided by six uh, it is 60 this is not the pulse actual pulse width the pulse width that we give alpha is over here so whatever constant value we are entering that will be the firing angle I'll be choosing it to be equal to 10 in this case and and I will be connecting it uh, over here in this particular fashion so once this is done uh, what we will be able to do is that we can uh, trigger uh, the output of the pulse can be given to the gate terminals respectively so uh, this can be done for all the other uh, terminals as well and we can enclose a circuit in this particular fashion uh, for all the thyristor bridges that is from uh, the corresponding uh, ones that are there adjacent to each other so connect this uh, in this particular fashion fashion so that the circuit is enclosed so uh, we will be doing that for uh, the rest of the terminals as well so uh, make sure it is placed adjacent to each other so that uh, 
the circuit doesn't look much bigger than what it is supposed to be uh, once this is done uh, we will be uh, connecting the gate terminals again we need uh, a pulse generator for all the other six uh, isn't it so we will be requiring uh, six different pulse generator blocks so before copy pasting that we will do one thing we will double click on the load uh, with respect to we will be using an inductor at the first place uh, just to uh, make sure uh, we see some amount of current at the output end in case uh, we uh, look at the output current and we also require uh, a capacitor so control c control v this uh, capacitor value will be designed based on the uh, amount of ripples that are there to be uh, that are supposed to be there so i am not having an exact design procedure this is just a trial and error uh, just to show you how it works and how it looks like so the design procedure with respect to this depends on your application so based on what you want to design it for or where it is supposed to be used you can design it for that and uh, uh, the resistance value chosen is 1400 ohms so the reason why i've chosen this is uh, something that is related to my laboratory uh, if uh, i have a rheostat which can be varied from uh, 0 to 3000 ohms so based on that if i'm practically uh, going to uh, implement this so i've chosen it to be equal to roughly around 1400 ohms so choose uh, 1400 ohms and once this is done we will be connecting this at this particular terminal and capacitor and inductor uh, uh, the resistance should be connected in this particular fashion now uh, connect uh, the ones with respect to uh, the thyristor bridges uh, end to end in this particular way uh, so that uh, the circuit gets completed and we will be able to connect uh, this uh, with respect to these two points over here so the capacitor in turn is to be connected uh, with respect to uh, the circuit with respect to the first thyristor bridge and the last thyristor bridge that is how we did for the other circuits as well so once all of these are done i mentioned that we need six uh, five more uh, so play, copy paste this from this place uh, and place it right uh, adjacent to this so that we will be able to see them uh, so we will be able to connect them directly with respect to the gate we will be doing it uh, for the rest of the ones as well so we have one two three four we will be requiring another one so copy paste uh, another one over here so once all of these are done now our next step is we don't need this uh, five more times because whatever synchronous frequency we getting it from here we can directly take it so in case you feel like doing it you can connect another uh, copy paste that for five times but nevertheless uh, we will not be requiring uh, that at this particular point in time we can take that synchronized frequency that is already generated with respect to the first universal thyristor bridge so once all of these are connected now we are supposed to uh, connect the constant value that is the firing angle alpha isn't it i will be placing this at this particular position so that we can directly connect it to this particular point again I will be connecting uh, the rest of the ones to the previous one so that it is easy for us to uh, connect it and uh, the wires don't go uh, for a long distance from one point to another and make our circuit look shabby and uh, we have connected this and uh, after this our next step is to connect it to the gate terminals in turn uh, that is our objective to trigger these universal bridges so we will be connecting it to the respective gate terminals so be careful while connecting these so uh, it should go to the corresponding ones uh, once all of these are done we have uh, entered all the values with respect to the circuit we will be measuring the voltage across the load that is with respect to the positive and the negative terminal so we will be able to connect it at any point over here so once this is done we will be connecting it to the rms value block in order to see what is the rms voltage one of the most important things to remember double click and change it to be equal to 50 hertz because that is in synchronism with respect to our supply frequency that is 50 hertz so if it is 60 hertz it is not coherent with respect to what is it is supposed to be so select 50 hertz for that matter and once this is done give it to uh, the display block and connect the scope uh, to the voltmeter here in case we want to see how the supply voltage also looks like and compare it with uh, the supply we will be uh, able to copy paste the voltmeter and directly connect it uh, and give it to the scope at this particular point and uh, once this is done we have connected all the circuit uh, connections and we have uh, made sure everything is in right so once all of these are done now uh, we can uh, 
uh, simulate a circuit that is uh, get a simulation time to be equal to 0.5 seconds don't go beyond that it takes a lot of time to simulate so that's the only reason uh, because of this particular block that is used it takes a lot of time to synchronize with respect to our supply frequency so uh, we will be uh, setting the simulation time to be equal to 0.5 seconds click on run so it will take a lot of time to simulate i will be uh, cutting a few portions in this video uh, i will directly uh, go to the result portion once it is simulated so be patiently waiting till we uh, get the simulation done so uh, we are getting an output voltage approximately equal to 220 volt so double click on the scope in order to see how the waveform looks like i'll be restoring it to the original view so after some time after 0.25 seconds uh, at this point uh, the circuit stabilizes and you see it, it to be almost be equal to a constant dc voltage so uh, there is an improvement with respect to our 18 pulse 24 pulse waveforms if you carefully observe the difference so these are the pulses that are produced at the output terminals so uh, this is how we will be simulating them although the circuit looks uh, as big as it looks like in this case uh, I hope you were able to simulate this successfully um, so in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you